got a couple other things open. All right. So the tool that we're going to be using is the YSeq Cloud Finder tool. Okay. okay. So the way to find that tool. Um, so you're going to want to, you know, obviously we'll use this on your raw DNA file. Uh, you can use it on the raw DNA files of any one of your male cousins whose tests you manage. Um, or have you know access to their raw DNA data, they can use it on theirs, right? Um, to find out their predicted haplogroup. The predicted haplogroup, um, that threw me off when I first heard it. Why is it predicted? Why is it not accurate, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's predicted only in the sense that, um, so are you in New York State? I am. Okay, so New York State is a prediction of where you live, right? Right. It's accurate, but it's not your precise address, correct? Correct. So that's what this tool does. It gives you a prediction of where you're at on the tree that is 100% accurate, but it's not going to be your precise location on the tree. You won't get that until you do a big Y DNA test, which tests a lot more. Uh, it tests your STRs and it tests thousands of SNPs, right? Mm -hmm. This is only a quick snapshot of it. So it's accurate. Uh, even though it's called a prediction. Right. So this tool you can use to identify if your patrilineal line is European, uh, Native American, um, from African, you know, from Africa, so a direct African patrilineal line, um, Asian, you know, uh, or other. Um, for those of us who descend from enslaved ancestors, we don't know what we don't know, right? We don't know if we come down from a European patrilineal ancestor or an African patrilineal ancestor or other. So this tool at least will get us on the map and figure out, is it European, is it African, is it something else entirely, right? Right. Um, it will also help you to look at some theories that you have on, of your cousin matches, right? So say for instance, you have an autosomal DNA cousin match and you guys have been working for years trying to figure out how the two of you connect. And maybe you have some theories out there. Um, maybe both of your patrilineal grandfathers share a surname. Maybe they lived next door to each other on the 1870 or 1880 census. And you guys have theorized maybe they're brothers, right? Do they share the same father? Um, you can actually answer questions like this or at least disprove that theory um, using this YDNA prediction tool, okay? So what we're gonna do here, um, well, let me back up real quick. So again, I just clicked on the tool, YSeq Clad Finder. So it takes me to the, the web address, cladfinder.yseq.net. It shows me an older tool, which is a Morley DNA predictor, which is still useful. Um, it shows me a little bit about what I'm gonna get. Um, I'll get not only the prediction, but I'll also get a little yellow icon where you can click it to go to the that uh, haplogroup address on the public Y full Y tree. You can click a little globe icon to, to look at the theoretical migration pattern for that particular haplogroup as well. Um, so I'll scroll down here to the bottom, click choose file, go to my file section. And I'm gonna select the ancestry DNA test, that, uh, the raw data that you sent to me. And I get that little uploading icon. It doesn't upload it in the sense of how your DNA is uploaded to get match, right? right? So it's not going to be, you know, remain on their, on this site. It's only going to be cached here while it runs through the tool mm -hmm. and gives you the result. Okay. And sorry, my phone was going off. No, that's okay. And the one thing that I don't like about this site <clears throat> is that when it's done uploading, it just takes you back to the top. <laughs> It doesn't say, okay. hey, I'm done. Look down below. So, and see, it popped me back all the way to the top, okay? Right. So it doesn't tell me that there's a result to look for down there. Um, so some people might get, you know, misled by that. So now when I scroll down, I can see right here, there's information here that wasn't there before. 
Yeah. And it tells me the most specific position on the Y full Y tree is ECTS 42. Now that sounds like Greek, right? Right. Um, <laughs> but CTS 42 under the E haplogroup is basically what that means. CTS 42 is the name of your ancient ancestor. Okay. It's somebody, it's a male that you directly descend from, you know, father to son descent who lived thousands of years ago, right? right. So somebody who lived so long ago that his name is lost to time. Okay. Yeah. And you can even get an idea of how long ago this individual lived by clicking on this yellow Y full square. And it takes you to the public uh, tree for the Y full site. And mm -hmm. you see here in the gold that it's highlighted here on ECTS 42. Okay? okay. And then you see over here in the blue that this is a haplogroup, meaning that this person was born uh, roughly you know, 13,000 years before present. YBP stands for years before present. Okay. And the time of the most recent common ancestor may have been about 9,000 years before present. Okay. So this okay. is an ancestor that lived between 9,000 and 13,000 years ago. Wow. Generations upon generations ago, right? Right. So he's going to have a lot of descendants. There are going to be a lot of people who match you and share this predicted haplogroup. They may branch off from another brother branch or cousin branch, right? Right. But they're going to share this ancient ancestor with you. That's what it means when you share a haplogroup with somebody. It doesn't mean that you're going to match them in recent times, but it definitely means you match them in ancient times. And it could be a clue that you might match them in recent times. Okay. okay. So you can kind of get an idea of where in the world this haplogroup originated from by looking here at the other descendants of this haplogroup. So you see this first one here is from Gambia, mm -hmm. okay? You also have one from the United Arab Emirates. You have some here from Congo, some here from Saudi Arabia and Kenya. So the Middle Eastern matches, uh, those are going to be descendants of people who were trafficked in the East African slave trade, okay? Um, the, you know, you can even see that, you know, you've got some Kenyans who descend from this haplogroup. So we can see that there was a presence in East Africa for this particular haplogroup. Um, you can also see that there are descendants here from West Africa as well. So this haplogroup and descendants from this haplogroup migrated in and around Africa, and some of them were trafficked into the Middle East where you see that they have modern day descendants in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, and so forth. And like you, they have, you know, this haplogroup has descendants in the US who were part of the US uh, or the transatlantic slave trade, okay? Right. So you can get an idea of, this is not a European haplogroup. <laughs> right. If it were a European haplogroup, it'd be an R haplogroup or an I haplogroup or a G haplogroup. And you'd be seeing folks here from England, uh, from Norway, from Sweden, from Russia, from Hungary, you know, other European countries. Okay. So you have a African patrilineal ancestor somebody who was likely stolen from West Africa, possibly from East Africa, but more than likely from West Africa. Um, and you have an unbroken line from your self to your father, to his father and so on, back to that individual um, who was put on, you know, a slave, uh, a slave ship. Right. Okay. So let's look at some more information on the ECTS 42. Uh, before I navigate from here, all of these other CTS12198, CTS7474, and Z985, those are what we call SNPs. Um, okay. Sometimes men are born and, you know, they might have all of the, they're definitely going to have all of the same SNPs that their father had, right? But mm -hmm. they might have a couple new ones, right? They might only have one new one or they might have a couple new ones. 
So right now with the amount of people who've tested, basically it's known that everybody who also, who carries a CTS-42 also carries all of these other SNPs, the 12198, the 7474, the Z985, the CTS-8602, and then these 48 others, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. Everybody who is testing positive for CTS-42 also test positive for these other SNPs until more men get tested and some may some men may not test positive for these okay okay so i don't want to take you into the weeds on that one (laughs) um (laughs) but basically it just means that um more men need to test uh in order to define these these branches better okay but currently this is the 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 information that scientists and geneticists, geneticists have to this date. Um, one of the ones that you'll notice in here is an M54. You see it down here on the bottom row. Yep. I don't M54, have my physical M54 cursor. Too. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. So what you're gonna see um, on another page that I'll show you in a minute is that family tree DNA calls this haplogroup, the CTS42, they call it by another name. They call it EM54. It's okay. the same name. It's, a, it's, it's, it's referring to the same haplogroup. Okay. Okay. So you're going to see that E-M54 when you put in the ECTS42. Um, and it's just giving you, it's not giving you a wrong information, but it's telling you that's what family tree DNA is calling it. CTS42 is what YFOL is calling it. Okay. okay but it's the same exact tablet group. So before we get over to the family tree DNA tool, I'm gonna take you back here. Oh, and and before I do, you see the the web address up here, yful.com forward slash Mm -hmm. tree forward slash CTS 42. Now you don't have to upload your your raw DNA to the YC Cloud Finder to get back to your haplogroup. group. You have it right there. You can always go back to that. You can send that to family members. You can go there and look for new test takers under the CTS 42. And you can, you know, uh, you can do more, um, much more with it as well. Uh, One of the things I didn't cover is gold in gold down here is your haplogroup, your most recent known haplogroup based on your raw DNA which is a CTS-42, but up above in these white boxes, Mm -hmm. you see the EM-90 Mm -hmm. and EM-98. Those are ancestors for your CTS-42, okay? So you can see that you also descend from EM-90 and you also descend from EM-98 because EM-90 descends from EM-98. And it literally, this is a tree. It just keeps going back in time. And you, if you click on them, you see that EM90 is older than the CTS42. So it's between 13,000 and 18,000 years, roughly. Right. EM98 is even older, between 18,000 and 37,000 years. EM75, EM75, and it just keeps going back and back all the way to A0T, which is Y-DNA atom. Okay. Okay. So you can look at your line of descent all the way back to the very beginning. Wow. Mm-hmm. And YDNA Adam lived roughly 200,000 years ago, 200 to 300,000 years ago. Wow. Your ancient, ancient ancestor. Okay. All right, so let me close this. Back on the Clad Finder page. Now I'm gonna click on the little globe icon, which is gonna show you the theoretical migrations and you can bookmark this page as well. So it's gonna give you the theoretical migration path for your particular haplogroup. I'm gonna zoom out some, you can see it's in Africa, it's over kind of in East Africa. My connection is slow, so it's moving slow. No, that's okay. 
Okay. And so the information to date that they have on the CTS-42 is that it stops in East Africa. We know because some of the Congolese um, who've tested that it likely migrated over into West Africa as well. But this information is also based on different sites. Um, I don't know if it's based on the Y-fold tree or the family tree DNA, uh, public Y-DNA tree as well, but it gives you an idea of the number of samples that are here. Okay. And the man who runs this site also has a blog and talks about his, you know, when he's updated it and if he's behind on updating it. Okay. Wow. So again, you can go ahead and bookmark this page. So you can also have this, you can screenshot it and include it in your family documents and information. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have your HAPA group, what you can do is you can actually take it and you can go over now to this new tool um, on Family Tree DNA. Um, you do not need to have an account. You can go in here and type in your HAPA group, E dash. CTS 42, show my report. It's gonna prompt you for some information. Nope, it didn't even make me log in. Uh, probably because I already did this. So typically it's gonna prompt you for some information, your first and last name. It's gonna ask you, are you a customer of Family Tree DNA? You can mm -hmm. just say no, even if you are. Um, and you can go ahead and, uh, you know, it'll also prompt you for your email address as well. Okay. Um, so again, remember ECTS 42 is the same as EM 54. So family tree DNA calls it that. You see your line of descent here. So you, you get it in the little tree icon, mm -hmm. line of descent down from EM 85, which is something that you saw also on the y tree, but you get it depicted here as an actual family tree, tree. with some of the dating. Now, some of the dating on the different sites are going to be different, right? Right. Um, so EM54, they're saying it was roughly 8,300 years ago, plus or minus 1,500 years. Okay. And then it gives you a BCE date as well with a 95% probability that he was born, you know, that ancestor was born between 7,700 and 5,000 BCE. Okay. Okay. Wow. So this is a little neat site you can... You know, of course, you know, on Google Chrome, you can print web pages to PDF. You can screenshot this and put this into re a report to share with family members. Um, mm -hmm. You can use this tool to get your DNA cousin matches excited about their Y-DNA lines. Right. Uh, and hopefully testing on Y-DNA. Um, you have here on the side, you've got a little menu as well. So you can get a country frequency for that haplogroup. Um, let's see. Was it on the first page? Let's see here. Yeah. But yeah, it was they've got some test takers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, no. I just was saying that they were on the first, the, this first page. So yeah. Saudi Arabia. Oh, so it says eight testers. Mm hmm In the Define, Saudi Arabia. Yep. They're saying that their origins are Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Nine uh, test takers um, have specified other countries. 10, roughly 10 test takers have specified the US and four have specified Kenya. Okay. And it's again, it's self-reported uh, self information of their right. earliest, their earliest direct known um, patrilineal ancestors. Mm -hmm. And occasionally you will have people on here who are self-reporting based on the results that African ancestry has given them or uh, self-reporting based on the family lore. Um, so I know I had one cousin of mine who had done a Y-DNA test, had an r haplogroup, group, but the family lore had been that that ancestor was Native American. And obviously the r haplogroup group was not a Native American haplogroup. group. You're right. uh, it was a European haplogroup. group. So the Y-DNA is correcting some of the lore uh, that we've been given by companies such as African Ancestry and um, that has been passed down in, among the family members. Okay. Um, one of the things that you might like is the notable connections. 
Now, the notable connections are not gonna be recent connections, obviously. So for instance, here it says that Desmond Tutu um, and your patrilineal ancestors share a patrilineal ancestor roughly 50,000 years ago. So he's not your first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a direct <laughs> he's not going to share any autosomal right. DNA with you unless you match on another branch <laughs> right you even got napoleon here who has um you know an ancient african haplogroup um we know that all of the haplogroups originated in africa and then descendants you know my the those haplogroups migrated out of africa and spawn the, you know, the European haplogroups and so forth. So I'm actually kind of curious. This has got me wanting to Google Napoleon's haplogroup. Um, I don't even know if they say it down here. Yeah, they don't even go into it and say it. Uh, let's see. Albert Perry is one. He's going to connect to everybody because this is the ancestor a very, very ancient ancestor, roughly 234,000 years ago along that A haplogroup. group. Okay. Ramses, again, an ancestor roughly 50,000 years ago. Um, the ancient connections differs from the notable connections. Uh, these are actual uh, ancient uh, archeological finds, right? So bodies that have been discovered and have been, you know, um, the products of archaeological digs. Okay. Oh wow. So you've got. Mm hmm. So you and this archaeological um, find, which they're calling Pret John, um, share an ancient ancestor roughly thirty-six thousand years ago, and found in Kenya. And then you've got all of these other samples as well. So some of them are going to be even further back. Right. But it's really neat in that it tells you, I mean, for me, Y-DNA puts a whole new spin on the term brotherhood, right? right? Because you truly realize how interconnected we all are, especially with that, that patrilineal line. Um, this is also going to give you suggested projects. So if you do ever decide to do a Y-DNA test, these mm -hmm. are projects that you can join um, that have haplogroups similar to yours. And then there's some scientific details if you're into graphs and all that stuff. Wow. But again, you can share this page on social media or with family members. You can screenshot stuff. You can print it to PDF. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing about this is this is science. It changes day to day. It changes with more discoveries. It changes with more test takers and so forth. So I know I've given you a ton of stuff <laughs> to think right. about. Do you have any questions for me? So if like, say for instance, I had uh, DNA match and they were, I, I don't know where he comes from. Is mm -hmm. there a source that I could use with my haplogroup? Cause he's a male also. Mm -hmm. So yes and no. So mm -hmm. it, it works a little bit better with, and I guess, let me go ahead and, and this is the, um, This is the example that I wanted to show to Terika this morning. And let me see if I can get it to look better. So it works better when you have a triangulation already, right? Okay. Um, so in my, in this example right here, let me get out of the edit mode. In this example right here, um, this particular ancestor right here, Tarleton Morrison, this is my father's patrilineal line, right? This is my two times great grandfather. So it goes me to my father, Leonard Morrison, to his father, Rufus, to his father, Daniel, and to Tarleton. So direct father to son connection from my father. And my father has done the Y-DNA test, okay? Okay. 
all of Charlton's uh, descendants who come from his son, Daniel Morrison, who's my great grandfather. Um, and I can't say all of them. Many of Daniel Morrison's descendants match descendants of all of the children of this couple right here. Guilford Wilson and Charity Walden, okay? okay. So this is, this. I've been researching this since like 2014. Um, initially, I hadn't even honed in on this couple yet because not enough of their descendants had tested to allow me to hone in on, hey, we match them without a doubt, right? Right. Um, it took a, it took even a, a few years for me to even get to the point where I was able to identify Guilford and Charity, okay? okay. Um, Tarleton, from the information I've, I've researched on him, I know he was born in North Carolina. Um, now I know that Guilford and Charity were, were, were both born in, in North Carolina, lived in North Carolina and died in North Carolina, right? Okay. Um, and like I said, they had probably about five or six children and descendants of Daniel mm -hmm. all match descendants of, uh, of you know, like descendants of each one of their children. So it's without a doubt is a triangulation to that couple. So my theory was, do Tarleton and Guilford share the same father? But I have some other theories, right? So they could share the same mother so they could be half brothers to their mother, they could be half brothers to their father, or they could be full brothers through both parents, right? Some other possibilities based on the shared DNA and the triangulation, it's possible that they're cousins to each other as well. They could be first cousins or second cousins, right? Right. Um, but my theory that I have out there is that it's possible that they either share the same parents or that they share a father. And I can test that with Y-DNA. I can find a patrilineal descendant of Charlton. I already have him, was my father, had already Y-DNA tested him. Mm -hmm. Now I need to find a patrilineal descendant of Guilford Wilson who's willing to test. So somebody from one of his sons and from one of his sons to a living descendant of one of, of, one of them that's a son, right? Unbroken Y-DNA line. And I also wanna autosomal test him because I wanna make sure he's matching everybody else who also descends from Guilford and Cherry. Right. So I want to test them. I want to see, do their, number one, do their haplogroups match? Um, because if their haplogroups don't match, then we probably have a problem, right? Um, but I especially want to see, do their STR markers match? Because the STR markers, if they match, then we are looking at like a, a high probability of matching within the past, you know, three to 10 generations, right? which is right. kind of the time frame that I'm looking at for these two individuals. So we found, like I said, a patrilineal descendant of Guilford, patrilineal descendant of Charlton, tested them both. Um, the Y DNA results were still in progress for Guilford's descendant uh, when his autosomal DNA came in, right? right? So I was really eager, didn't wanna wait for Y DNA results, STR results, went out there, uh, did the Y-DNA prediction on his haplogroup no, or to get his predicted haplogroup, right? So did the, the prediction on his autosomal DNA. So I already knew that Tarleton's descendants have the haplogroup of EU174, okay? okay. Using the y full tree, I can see EU174 is here. It's roughly 5,000 years old, right? Mm -hmm. I can see that it's got a line of descent from M191 to that FGC number in all these little white squares all the way up to the EM4895, right? right? And as you saw on yours, each one of those haplogroups gets older and older and older by thousands of years, right? Right. So Guilford's Y-DNA haplogroup was EU175. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, I already knew their STR markers were not gonna match. The way that I knew that is because I was already versed in reading the Y full tree. And I know that EU175, yes, it's a descendant of the 4895, but it comes off of a different branch. So 
let me go here and see if I can put both of these here in the same shot. So you see EM4895 up here at the top, right? Mm -hmm. And for EU174, the next step down from 4895 is 4706, right? Right. The next step down for EU175 is 4231. So when I look at the ages of those HAPA groups, the 4895 and the 4231, they're, you know, they formed about 9,000, you know, 8,000 to 10,000 years ago, right? Right. So they're brother branches to each other. That's when they branched off from each other, roughly eight to 10,000 years ago. That's well past the roughly 200 years that I'm trying, that my theory is in, right? Right. So they don't match. And I already knew before his STR markers came in, I knew that they weren't going to be a match on the patrilineal line and on YSTR markers. Um, I was disappointed, obviously. I was hoping for an easy answer. <laughs> Let them match. Let them, you know, even though I don't know who Gilbert's father's name is and who Tarleton's father's name, you know, because we don't have death certificates for either one, it was still going to be a link via Y-DNA, and that would explain the autosomal matching, right? Um, once I got over my disappointment, I realized, you know what? It's disappointing that they don't match. I wanted an easy answer, but you know, in genealogy, we don't get that easy we answer. Don't get either, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I was able to cross off a possibility, right? I now know for a fact that they don't match each other on their patrilineal lines. So it had to be the Doesn't mother. Doesn't mean... It could be the mother, right? Mm -hmm. It could be that they're first cousins. It could be a grandmother. It could be their father, you know, um, their fathers could have been half brothers and had the same mother. You know what I mean? Right. So there's several other possibilities still out on the table. And hopefully as science grows, uh, we'll be able to figure that out. Um, because I don't have known sisters for either one of them, I can't test out a map, you know, mtDNA in this fashion. Um, so I'm, I'm not necessarily back at square one on them. Like I said, I've been able to eliminate certain theories, um, right. disprove certain theories. So why DNA is very useful for that disproving. Um, so even if you, so say for instance, you had a scenario like mine, right? Right. And the, as you're waiting for the Y DNA results, it comes back and they're both under EU174, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that there's, they're on that patrilineal line. It only means that they share that ancestor roughly 5,000 years ago. Okay. Okay. So okay. you wanna look at, do they also match on STR markers? If they match on STR markers, then yes, they're gonna be connected on the patrilineal line. Um, but if they only share haplogroups and their markers don't match, then in essence, they're double related, right? They're related through that ancient ancestor, EU174, roughly 5,000 years ago, and they're related through an autosomal ancestor somewhere more recently. Wow. Yep. So it is helpful. Confirm, disprove. <laughs> <Right. laughs> wow. Any other questions? Thoughts? No other questions. I am currently waiting on my Y DNA test that I took through Frank Family Tree DNA. Right. So we will see Yay. what comes of it. Awesome, awesome. I, only took I look the forward to 37, I think. The 37? I think That's it's, it's the one that was. It was the one that was one. That night, something like that. Nice. That's a perfect starter test. That is a test that I tell folks to start with. Um, start with it, see where you fall. Do you have matches? Do you not have matches? Um, you know your more recent haplogroup. So the 37 marker haplogroup is not gonna give you that ECTS42. 
right? right? You're getting that from your autosomal DNA because that tool, that YC clad finder is reading some SNPs along your, your Y DNA. Right. Um, eventually, when you do a big Y DNA test, you're going to get a more precise address for your Y DNA on the Y tree. Okay. Um, and then you're going to be able to look at it and see that it's below the CTS 42. Oh, okay. Cause yep. Because it's a, it's a, you're going to descend from that CTS 42. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this got you a little step of the way closer. The SDR yes. markers are going to get you a little bit closer. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. potentially if you have matches and if they've done a big Y test, you might even be able to look at where you're at on the tree without okay. having to do a big Y DNA test on your own. So it's a good starter test, solid starter test. Big and, Y is what, 500? Oof, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. And then it's even more to download the BAM file, which is the Y DNA equivalent of the raw DNA file. Mm-hmm. And then it's like $50 to download, to upload to Y full. Um, so some people do that added expense as well. So it's a pretty good chunk of change, um, which is why I, I don't push people to do it. Um, I held out for a long time on my father's test. I, he, I had him do the Y DNA 37 marker back in 2015, mm -hmm. um, tested him in August and he actually passed away in November of wow. that same year yep so i'm glad that i did it when i did I, um because none of us are promised tomorrow none of us and mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> with family tree dna they actually hold the sample for 25 years so i knew that i could wait to upgrade to the big y and karim rand who actually um has advised me on on some y dna stuff um and I was telling him about this project that I was doing for Legacy Reclaimed and, and testing um, Africans from the continent, whether they're in di diaspora or not, um, but wanting to test them on 37 markers. Um, he said, why don't you christen the project with upgrading your dad to the big Y? And I'm glad that I did um, because even though his only known match on the 37 marker test is his known second cousin, who also comes down from Charlton Morrison. Okay. I can now see that he has matches on Big Y that are roughly 1900 to 2100 years old. So, and so mm -hmm. you can go ahead. You you can do the actual Y test, but have no matches. On, on the STR markers, yes. And then you can upgrade to big Y and have distant matches on big Y. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's, I, I, you know, I'm having um, some difficulty with my father's side, but I think that with my father's side, it is, um, there's not enough living relatives, descendants. Mm -hmm. I don't think that mm -hmm. there was a big, big family there. Um, okay. Because I don't think I have another. Well, I do have two other male cousins, but I doubt that they did a test for anything. Um, I don't mm -hmm. even know, actually. So, so it will yep. be interesting to see what comes of this Y test, this Y test. Pretty much. Yep. They might be tested and be out there for all you know. There, there might be somebody that you have yet to discover who's out there on, right. on in, in the STR matches. Um, we, there was another guy that I had recommended, you know, cause I'm, I'm aggressively recruiting for people to do the Y DNA test. I had him do his and he had a match out, out there on 37 markers, um, same surname. And when they corresponded, it was actually, um, somebody who he had already, it was, it was kind of that same example that I used. They knew, they kind of knew they were related, but they didn't really have any proof. Um, they had, they were in the same County, lived next door. The family said, yeah, they were kin, but you know how our family is. They didn't really explain how. Right. Um, 
and they had always thought that they were related because of the surname, because of the lore um, and all that other stuff. And now the Y-DNA confirms it. Yes, they were related. They were brothers. So even though they never were on a census record together and they didn't have death certificates saying who the father was, they were brothers. Um, shared the same father, same patrilineal line, uh, as well as the autosomal DNA. Um, and as a matter of fact, when he when the Y DNA test results came in, that match on Y DNA had not yet done the autosomal. For whatever reason, they had heard negative <laughs> information about the autosomal DNA test, so they only did the Y DNA test. So, wow. so do you do, was, do a lot? Of Go ahead. Do, is it does a, does a lot of people um, do a lot of people do that? Take the Y before taking the autosomal test. That was really my first time seeing somebody who's done Y DNA only. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that there might be a couple others out there. But most people have been pleased with the ancestry test and then just stop there, right? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like the opposite. Most people are like, oh, I like the ancestry test. No, I don't want to do the Y DNA. Yeah, I have to do the Y. I had to do that. I'm, I'm going to have to keep going because I need to be able to find. Um, my father never really left us with a lot of information about his family. Okay. Um, I have matches. Um, not many. I got my uncle tested. My mm -hmm. cousin is tested. But you know, we have all these matches that we have no idea if they're not coming from the Houston lineage. I just don't think that the Houston family was a big family. I, I think that we were just a part of a small family. Got it. But I'm well, still do, searching. You know, yep, yep. So start off with just some triangulation, just like what I did. I triangulated those matches from Guilford Wilson and Charity Walden. They're definitely on my, on my patro, you know, patrilineal line. Um, so then do some targeted, you know, reaching out to cousins and fishing among your, your autosomal matches and say, hey, you appear to be on my paternal line somewhere. I'm hoping it's a patrilineal line that I'm trying to learn more about. And have you done Y-DNA testing? Are you interested in doing Y-DNA testing? And definitely the first step is just learning their haplogroup because most of us don't even know that. We have no clue. So, and it's free if, well, I got, I kind of got knocked on one of the YouTube videos because somebody was like, well, you said it was free. And I was like, yeah, it's free with your That's autosomal free. test. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've done that step, you can get, get your haplogroup for free as long as you're born genetically male. Right. So. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, let's see what the Y says. And I'm just, I'm going to have to really just go ahead and. And, and do it. I'm, 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 I want to know so bad. So I know. <laughs> me too. I'm still waiting for my matches on YDNA, you know, that are closer to help me identify my, my third great grandfather, you know, but right. it will come. It will come. And the more we get the word out, the more, I mean, you might be recruiting one of my matches for all I know, you know, among right. your own cousins. Um, right. That's how it's going to happen, you know, just word of mouth. Especially being in sense that you you're in the you're in North Carolina, I am too. And so that is that's interesting. So it's the origin for so many of us. Absolutely. Yes. 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 So awesome. this was very informative. So thank you so very much. Um, no worries. And I'm gonna to... Yeah, I'm gonna throw this out there on YouTube as is. Let okay. the others from the clubhouse group see it. Let Spencer share it. Some of my other little followers, you know, I'm growing my little YouTube channel, so they'll they'll see it as well. Um, so, yeah. So again, just spreading the word. Thank you so Definitely. much for your time. You are welcome. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.